Welcome to another edition of our Treatment of the International Sunday School Lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, The Word Heals. And it's taken from John, the fourth chapter, verses 46 through 54. And it's for July the 10th, 2022, summer quarter, lesson number six. Now, today's lesson is about a very wealthy, well-placed individual who had a child that was very sick and at the point of death. Now, this person, according to most uh, theologians and scholars, this person was either he was uh, associated with the royal family of Herod and Antipas, and he was either a foster brother or a uh, stepbrother to Herod and Antipas, or he was someone very high up in the court uh, by the word that is used in the original Greek text. Now, also, too, it is real easy to confuse this story with the story of the centurion servant because they, they, there are things in both stories that are common, uh, mainly that Jesus healed someone without actually going to the location to do it. Um, but there are a, enough differences. Uh, first off, the centurion uh, was a centur centurion. And the second off is that the centurion uh, asked Jesus not to even come to his, to his house, but if he just said the word because he knew that Jesus, Jesus had authority, whereas uh, this person on his son... Uh, actually asked Jesus to come uh, to start with. Uh, so that's another minor differences. But they are, they are similarities in the two stories. Uh, but they are different. It's a different act of healing. Um, they also happened in different time periods. They also, um, you know, a couple of other, other little things that are a little bit different about the stories. But today's story really touches, especially for those of us that are parents, uh, there's a, a lot of touching, um, emotional memory that we can, that we all can associate with, because all of us uh, that have raised children have had those real heart-wrenching moments when your child was real sick or they were very hurt. Uh, you didn't know whether or not they were going to make it or not. Um, I couldn't help but remember uh, reading the story today of the time that my daughter climbed up at real high up in a tree when she was about, I guess, maybe 14 feet above the ground. And uh, we didn't realize she had climbed up there. And we hollered at her, and she went to go try to get down. And when she did, the limb broke. And she hit the ground, and the doctors told us that if she had just been just a little bit higher up on her neck, she'd have been um, paralyzed from the neck down. Um, but the har most horrifying thing I think I've ever experienced in my life is when she rolled over, there was a, a Rebecca-size uh, form in the ground where she actually indented the ground. She hit the ground so hard. Um, but, you know, being a father, being a parent, you know, you have those moments where things like that happen. And thankfully, and thank God that the Lord looks out after us when he does and uh, sees us through those kind of moments. Okay. Now, John 4 and 46, once more he visited Cana in Galilee 
where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. And again, you know, thinking about the father's love and everything, I can't help uh, but turn my mind back to reading the story of Jacob when Joseph, when his brother has sold him into slavery and they got the um, they got the um, his garment and they killed the animal and spread the blood on his garment and Jacob just knew his son was dead. And in Genesis 37, 34 through 35, uh, Jacob said, Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. And a parent you know, that strong bond, that strong attachment that we have with our children. And when they're sick, uh, we feel their pain. When they hurt, we feel their pain. We hurt with them. And that's what this father was doing. And even though he was uh, a person of a lot of wealth, a person of a lot of standing in the community, when his child got sick, he went to Galilee and sought out Jesus. And when we need help, we need to keep on searching till we find, find him. Okay, just like the old song says, I kept on searching, I kept on searching. Kept on searching till I found him. Amen. Okay, John 4, 47. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. So we see here from this verse how the Bible is talking about uh, this child was right at death's door and catastrophe was right around the corner where this man was about ready to lose his child and he made all effort to get to Jesus to the king of kings the lord of lords and get relief for his child Okay, John 4, 48 through 49. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before, come down before my child dies. And, you know, we have to, you know, first off, let me make note of the fact that that there were all kinds of miraculous signs when Jesus walked this earth. He rose, the dead was raised, the lame walked, the blind saw, lepers were cleansed. There were all types of miraculous signs when Jesus was here. Okay? Uh, Paul was talking to, to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1, 22 through 24. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So we see here where Paul is talking about the different groups, how that one group will look after signs and one group will look after wisdom. And he's saying here that Jesus is the ultimate power of God 
And Jesus is also the wisdom of God. Now, we have to be real careful, though. You know, when we're talking about, when Jesus was talking about signs and wonders, we have to be real careful that we don't let people fool us. Because there's, there's trickery in this world where people will fake things. And you want to be real careful to make sure that you're not being made a fool out of. And they've even been so-called Christian ministries that have uh, put on scams to make the preacher look like he is uh, some kind of big shot that he's not. And we should... Once that is known, we should never take somebody serious past that point. And I'll tell you something, more so than seeing miracles and signs and wonders, we need to go look in the book and see if it agrees with the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the ultimate divining uh, indication of whether or not something is of God or not. If you uh, run across somebody and you see some kind of miracle or some kind of thing that uh, where they know something that they really had no human way of knowing um, and what they are preaching is not does not agree with the word of God, you better run. Because they are other types of powers in this world. Okay? And we need to be real careful to make sure that the people we are following and the people we are listening to agree with the Word of God. We've got to be sure of that kind of thing. Because there are coming... And they are, from time to time, they will raise their nasty head of these charlatans and fake um, people that are full of the devil that will go out there and lie and go on and put on some kind of show for people. And... Um, and they're doing nothing but just leading people astray. Now, let me be perfectly clear and honest and clear about this. I am a Pentecostal preacher. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in, in people are healed. I've seen people healed. I've been healed myself. Um, I believe in praying in tongues. I believe in words of knowledge. I believe in prophecy. But everything is subservient to agreeing to what the Bible says. If the, somebody is telling you something that is contrary to the Word of God, you better run. Okay? Now, John 4 50 and 51. And Jesus replied, Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. Now there's a lot in those two verses. A lot in those two verses. First off, now put yourself in this man's position. He was a big shot. His son that he loved dearly got severely sick. So he goes, seeks out Jesus, this Preacher that he had heard about, he sought him out. 
He had asked Jesus to come to his house. And Jesus more or less let the big shot know that he wasn't going to take the time to go to his house. He was going to simply state a word. Your son will live. And this man had the faith and accepted the word of Jesus Christ and took Jesus at his word. Now, when we're faced with difficulties and we're faced with trouble and we pray and ask God for God's help, and he answers our prayer, we need to take God at his word. The writer of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for, in assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now stop and think about any time that you are under the gun about something and you pray and you hear from on high, you got assurances God's going to see you through. Remember that act of creation. God stepped out into the nothingness. The nothingness. And spoke a word. And the universe came into being. That is totally incomprehensible. The amount of power that takes for that to happen is incomprehensible to us. You see that equation of Einstein's theory of relativity of the relationship between energy and mass equals mc squared. And that's the relationship between matter and energy. There is such an unequal, unequal to each side of that that when we dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, those were just ounces of matter that were converted into energy. And you see the, the amount of power that was in those two bombs. There is so little matter converted to energy for those bombs. It's just a few ounces. That is how much energy it takes to convert to matter. And think about that. God had the power to step out into the nothingness and with his awesome power speak the universe into existence. Okay? Now, John 4, 52 and 53. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that that was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, 
your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. Now, in, in the King James Version, it says the seventh hour. And that's actually the, in the original Greek, hip, hip domos. Um, but that is, it's called the seventh hour. Uh, 1 p.m. is called the seventh hour. And the way that the Jews at the time would actually tell time. So that's really the same thing. The seventh hour and the 1 p.m. are actually the same thing. Not that that really matters, just to let you know. Uh, in Psalms 33, 8 through 9, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Let us fear the Lord and trust in him. Okay, John 4, 54. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea of Galilee. And of course, the first sign was, of course, the, um, uh, was turning the water into wine. Now, concluding thoughts. Trust the Lord. We're all going to face hardships in this world. Trust the Lord to see you through. Now, the situation may not change. You know, you may, it may be time for that person to pass. But trust the Lord to see you through whatever you're going through. Trust the Lord to heal the sick. Trust the Lord to uh, see you be able to meet that financial need. Trust the Lord to um, help you get a better job. Trust the Lord to uh, help y'all get along better in your household. Trust the Lord to give wisdom to your children. Trust the Lord to give wisdom to your parents. Trust the Lord for all your needs. Okay? Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.